So yeah, so the, we we watch a lot of bunny murder, and then they stare triumphantly out over a pile of bunny corpses. Again, it had to say that in the script. The screenwriter must have written the words, and then they stare triumphantly out over a pile of bunny corpses. <laughs> I'm guessing he wrote it, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy style all over <laughs> in the margins of the script. Jack Rabbit a dull boy. Nice. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema selectively. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Adorable rabbits. I can't wait. It's such a good <laughs> the best. Easter selection. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? That's right, Noah. This movie is about Easter, and that's why <laughs> totally. I chose it. Counts. Counts. So tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Night of the Lepus. It's the story of the most adorable zombie horde of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is. delightful. It's a horror movie about Flemish giants, which are real. They're like these yeah. huge, awesome yep. rabbits. It might be the cutest animal there is, and it's <laughs> the bad guy in their horror movie. Mm -hmm. it's so fucking dumb. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the earnestly awful creature features of the 60s and 70s, but you couldn't get the rights to the Care Bears for your villains, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a walk into the widow face of death, the movie. Yeah, no. And so the key word to what you just said, of course, is earnestly mm -hmm. right like if a modern movie came out about giant killer rabbits you would rightly expect it to be tongue-in-cheek throughout not this fucking movie this uh -uh. movie was taking itself as seriously as the fucking godfather from start to finish 100 not a smile cracked on set as they made <laughs> they tried so hard and if by the way when we're talking about killer rabbits We'll get to it, but you're probably already picturing like, I don't know, some kind of mutated scare. No, no. Nope. We are talking about rabbits. Just, just ra bunnies. picture a rabbit. They're a little bit bigger, that. but it's just the same rabbit. Yeah. Yep. But they're not. That's the best part is they're not. They just built dollhouse. I, we'll right, get to well, it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get to it. We'll get there. And we'll stay there for a very long time because that's 85% of the film. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst checkers. Yes, thank that, you. We did. It was Ooh, chess. Sure. It was chess with Donald James Park. This they show. It's so short. They show this tiny little sec, second or two of checkers, and I was so fucking mad. First get possible. Just, get it right, or don't show checkers. There you go. You it was two seconds. Just don't show it. So I was gonna go with the best worst corpse. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout this movie, we will see the aftermath of the giant killer rabbits and shit. The first time we see it, the first time we see the full on body of someone who's been attacked by rabbits to death, it's the best bot. It's certainly the best one we've seen since Estes Perkle, right? Yeah. Oh, no question. It's like someone bought a mannequin on wish along with some tomato sauce. We'll get <sighs> to it. Yep. Yep. And I'm going to go with best worst big finale. Okay. <laughs> right. Because, this movie has a finale, I would say, halfway through. Mm -hmm. And then the actors, nay, the characters, sort of sit around and think to each other, well, what's the movie about now? So they just sort of go like, you know what? The rabbits are still alive. We'll do another. We'll, we'll do another. We'll do another. We'll do, another we'll do, we'll do that again. Two for one special. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. At the risk of giving the tortoise a head start, we're going to take a quick break. But we'll be back in a flash with all the boopable snoots that are... Night of the Lepus. All right, guys, welcome to the first ever writers' meeting for Night of the Lepus. Right. Sorry, question just before yeah. we get started. Mm -hmm. Frank, go ahead. Lepus means rabbit, right? Is this movie about killer rabbits? I know. Terrifying, right? Uh, no. No, not like terrifying. Literal opposite of terrifying. The opposite. Yeah. 
Wait, you guys aren't freaked out by rabbits? The universally beloved creature? No, no, we are not freaked out by them. Nope. Well, I no, yeah, yeah, me neither. You um you guys didn't let me finish. Uh the, oh, it's, the okay. rabbits in this are like these are huge rabbits. Oh, so it's like a Godzilla rabbit or something like that. Yeah, I guess that no, would be. Well, no, not that big. I was like a, like a like a large dog size. A rabbit the size of a dog would be awesome. I would literally yeah. wish for that if I had a genie. That sounds exactly. amazing. So, so, but, the, but these ones are super vicious and they bite you with their big, scary teeth, even though your cousin says they're really nice. And when you tell your aunt your cousin's rabbit bit you, she calls you a liar and tells your mom you have to go home early and everybody's mad at you and they won't believe you. I, I mean, kill people. They kill people at night. Sounds, um, sounds scary, man. Yeah, super scary. You know, if you ever wanted to talk about anything... I'm fine, like Frank. I'm fine. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on the MGM lion looking embarrassed to be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> like they should put the growl through one of those voice changers or something, you know? It literally looks like he's looking around to say, are those rabbits? Are there a bunch <laughs> of rabbits in this movie? <laughs> Do you guys want me to be the monster? I feel like that's a really <laughs> this be way, way better dumb idea. Movie. A lot scarier. So we open up on a on a newscaster desperately trying to say, I know you think that they're fucking adorable, but rabbits like are very problematic, like in Australia, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he ends the thing by saying, do we have a right to destroy these monsters because they show them like all over Australia being a problem? And then we watch rabbits just adorably running around right after he's yeah. like, destroy these monsters. These monsters. Like, right. He has a remarkably Tim the Enchanter vibe throughout the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. He says, science is doing its best. And I wrote, but till then, beating them with sticks is all we can do. <laughs> ah, 70s. No middle ground. When was the middle ground invented, Noah? Was it yeah. 1981? Or <laughs> yeah, and then we got there? rid of it in 1982. It's fun. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't last long. I love, too, that there's just a, a Chiron that comes up that says rabbit war. And I had to write in my notes, not the only animal Australia was going to lose a war to. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If this producer does Night of the Emus, I will watch it. Yeah. Hell's yeah. 100%. And it'll actually be scary. Those things are fucking weird looking. Right. No, they are kind of terrifying. Yeah. So, yeah, but he's like, but, you know, the Australia had their problem, but now there's a new plague of, of rabbits in the Southwest and it's difficult to think of something so cuddly as dangerous, which makes this really the stupidest possible plot for a movie, ultimately, <laughs> yeah. but... I don't want to do the movie. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah. Also a big problem in the American Southwest where life is in color and then we see yes, a bunch of color shots. To Australia. Yeah. Australia didn't have color until 1977. No, yeah. They got it just before we got middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. No, you know, they actually mm. chose between middle ground and color and they went with <laughs> color. So, and then we get the credits. Oh, sorry. We, because the image that like the freeze frame that we get the credits over, it, look, it looks like gangster rap rabbits dropping their newest album, right? Yep. Over very not threatening looking rabbits. <laughs> they try so What hard. can only be described as bun buns. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the credits go on for so long. So, okay. So eventually the credits end. Because these are 70s credits, right? They have everything up front. Mm -hmm. And then again at the end. So we cut to this cowboy dude. This is Cole. He's on a horse in his ranch in the middle of Arizona somewhere. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, oh, please be about to have a shootout with a rabbit. Please be about to have a shootout with a rabbit. <laughs> it's close. Yeah. It's close. No, the fucking rabbits take out his horse. His horse steps in a rabbit hole and breaks its <laughs> leg. Okay. I didn't I didn't catch the rabbit hole. I thought the movie was like, this horse got side tackled by a rabbit. We're not going to show you this. <laughs> but an evil rabbit just smashed this horse like mean Joe Green. Yeah. Trust us, there's an Aikido-knowing rabbit that did a real number on this horse. Yeah, right. And we have to point out that, like, this is a horse trick, right, where they, like, fall over and lie mm. down, except they somehow managed to get a bad horse actor who can't stop <laughs> grinning at the camera, like, ah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm lying totally down. Totally nailed it, right? It's like, it's like I'm lying down. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Okay. I thought this this was the best actor in the movie, honestly. Well, let's no, see, that is also true. not not saying Those that. are both yeah. true. Yeah, but okay, so there's like a whole bunch of rabbits everywhere. Maybe the horse didn't get side-tackled by one, but 
we're seeing the infestation, right? Yes. Uh huh. I'm not scared by this. I mean, like, nope. don't show monsters not being monsters. I feel like I personally could beat up several thousand rabbits at once. Like, Ooh. no problem. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So we're going to have to make that happen. That's the new horse size. How duck. many rabbits do you think you could beat up, Eli? Three. Three rabbits. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I would take the uh, I would take the under on three. I like for for Eli. Yeah, <laughs> I would also take the under on several thousand for you, Heath. I'm sorry to say, uh, I, I don't I don't mean to doubt your rabbit killing skills or anything. <laughs> Cut to Heath. All right, well, that, that, all right, now we're doing this for sure. I will several <laughs> several means at least what three thousand. So I'm I could beat up three thousand rabbits. All, all right. right, we'll get three thousand rabbits. You practice your nunchucks. <laughs> I don't need nunchucks. No, he doesn't get nunchucks. That we, there was nothing in this about nunchucks. <laughs> There's nothing that says I can't have them either. <laughs> so we're eight seconds into the. You're just going to spray a bunch of cyanide in the room. And come, <laughs> I'll corner trap them all so, day. I don't care. <laughs> so anyway, so the 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 farmer gets out his gun to shoot his to mercy kill his horse. We are eight seconds after the credits. We're already mercy killing horses. Yeah, right. Heath's beating up rabbits in the show. I guess I can't really. I, I don't want to cast stones here. <laughs> Yeah, I really wanted it to cut to the rabbit, and he's just like, nice, got him. <laughs> so so the rancher, uh, Cole, walks back to his ranch. His son says, where's Ranger, Dad? And he says, shot him. It's the 70s. We don't sugarcoat right. shit like that. Yet. His leg hurt a little, so I murdered him. <laughs> like you do. But he calls the college. He calls the local college to get their very best fucking rabbitologist or whatever. I'd like to file a Title IX complaint against those rabbits for making me murder my horse instantly. I touched his foot for like a solid two and a half seconds, so I really had no choice here. So yeah, so so we cut over to the college where he's meeting with the rabbitologist in charge, and there's this great moment where he's like, "Oh well, you know, I could get Dave Smith for you," and he's like, "What? That maverick rabbitologist? Hell no! <laughs> like, Why?" <laughs> Why is that line in the movie? It's it is the most ponderous line of the entire <laughs> film. In a film that chose to make rabbits their monster, I spent a lot of time being like, "Why does the script have a false start about which rabbitologist they're going to use?" In it? <laughs> okay, the guy who made this movie has a blood feud with a lepidologist in real life, like <laughs> yeah. <for sure. laughs> Right, mm -hmm. and this was it. Yeah. Oh, that might be it. Yeah. He's, but apparently, that guy has ideas that are too controversial for mainstream Cuna culture. So he's like, "No, no, not him. We have to go with somebody different." He's like, "Well, you know, I do know a couple that works on insects." And Cole rightly is like, "What the fuck are you? I'm going to need you to focus in, man. We're talking about rabbits. No, no, no. It's the '70s. We're just killing stuff at this point. Okay." <laughs> I know we don't know the difference between the aminals until 1995, my friend. Don't worry it's about it. Fucking weird. So okay, so then we cut to this couple that's going to help him. They're trapping bats. the The wife, Jerry, is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch the name. I didn't think that she got named in this movie. As far as I could, it was just like every white lady in all of 70s movies. She's there too. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. So now we meet them. They're trapping a few bats. Now, patrons will know this is not our worst scientist traps bats scene because we did no. Morpheus, but it's the worst one on the main feed. Yeah. Also, like, what's the opposite of no animals were harmed in the making of this film? <laughs> so, All the animals in the universe were harmed. He's like firing these bats out of a pitching machine into their cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I had to check, I, honestly, the, and and no arm, animals were harmed in the making of this. I would have been real fucking uncomfortable otherwise. But yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. If you can believe that. I feel like spiritually, emotionally, they were harmed. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the MGM lion is embarrassed to have been what here. <laughs> He's fucking with the bat. He very clearly shakes a cage full of bats. I want to know what David Copperfield shit they pulled <laughs> that no animals were harmed. <laughs> and they were treating the bats better than the babies of the 70s. It's fine. That's true. Yeah, yeah right, right, exactly. Like the bats could be smoking a cigarette and they'd be like, no harm came to any of the animals. <laughs> I you did yeah, not I did. give thalidomide to any of these bats. People, though? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't ask us how we treated the bat who was black, okay? That's all I'm going to say. So, so, but now he's trying to record the sound of bat fear, but everybody keeps walking in and fucking it up. And I'm like, yeah, man, early days of my podcasting career, I get, I get, it. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, but a counterpoint. Hey, Roy, 
Your boss is here. So is your child. So is your wife. Wait a second to hit fucking record. <laughs> so, well, or at least just go, hey, guys, I need nothing but bat fear for the next 15 seconds. OK, give me 15. Yeah, you could have at least done that. <laughs> trying to get room noise. The bats are all like me just shifting in their chairs, trying to quietly eat clean us. <laughs> <laughs> Squeaking. <laughs> So, yeah, but the boss shows up. This is Elgin. And, of course, Elgin is DeForest Kelly. This is uh, Bones from Star Trek. Yes. Fun IMDb trivia that came with this movie. This was DeForest Kelly's last movie that was a, a Star Trek movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and you know what? I can see why. If he strayed once off the set of Star Trek and this is what he ended up in, I can see why he didn't make yeah. any other. <laughs> right. No, trust me, you don't want to make any other movies out there, Jim. They're fucking madness out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, and this is, of course, where we learn that the plan here, the reason they're getting bat fear recorded is that they're going to use the screams to steer the bats towards the mosquitoes that they want to kill. This has a very old lady that swallowed the fly vibe to it right away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And can I just say, I would really like us to start using this with humans. Right. Like, you know, that moment where you're trying to move everyone from the cocktail hour into the diner. Right. You just walk in with a say anything speaker. Oh, my God, it's on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> All right. if everyone would move you're describing into the Fox diner. News. We do that. Oh, yeah. Shit. No, that's true. That's true. Damn it. I described Fox News again. That's one. <laughs> so, Erase the number on the board. The days until number on the board. <laughs> we got to put a zero. So, but Bones comes in and he's like, hey, man, I need you guys to help this guy Cole that we've already introduced to the movie with with his rabbits. And of course, they're like, dude, rabbits aren't bugs. We do. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. He's like, I know, I know. But if we don't take care of these rabbits now, all of the farmers and ranchers of the area will, quote, bomb the country with cyanide. Oh, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Really? <laughs> they were like, what do we do with cyanide bombs? Wow. OK. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe kill the ranchers instead is the solution here. <laughs> right. Yes. The terrorist cyanide bomb right. people. Let's, let's kill them. I mean, the rabbits, no matter how bad it's going to get, are not going to bomb you with cyanide. <laughs> Guys, it's been 25 years since the Holocaust. I have very specific questions about which ranchers had cyanide bombs and why. <laughs> right. So, okay. So, but they agree, right? So they they drive out and they they see a rabbit round up along the way. They have their daughter with them, by the way. So they're just driving her right past the mass rabbit slaughter. Okay, the yeah. rabbit slaughter was insane. I laughed a lot because everybody's just firing giant guns in every direction, and they are fast little rabbits are not getting hit pretty much ever so at just, all. At all, they're like shooting themselves in the leg constantly, jumping yeah. around. Oh God. <laughs> So I'm sorry. I just I just realized you guys experienced. So they're just they're trying to make noise to to round the rabbits up. The idea that though they're trying to shoot the rabbits. Is Thank you. I, okay. I also experienced that. Heath and I'm right. not willing to give them the credit for that. That clearly is what made sense, Noah. But I don't think the movie knows. I think they lied to you, though. I think you walked up on them once, missing the rabbits, and they were like, "No, no, no. This is how it works." Trust me. <laughs> Just like Joe Pesci running out of the cab and shooting the owl in every direction. Yeah. That's what we're watching in mass. Just a rabbit doing gun food like Christian Slater. Yes. <laughs> Taking out all the farmers in a semicircle. So, yeah. So, but the scientist shows up and he's like, uh, you know, we, we drive past a lot of screaming rabbits, which is fun. But he drives up, he, he goes to Cole and he's like, yeah, I'm going to need to examine some of these rabbits and I'm like they're just regular fucking rabbits man they're somebody's rabbits. already measured their hopitude or whatever I don't <laughs> think you need any but but he's like you know so what are we what are you thinking what what can we do to get rid of the rabbits so Roy that's the scientist husband he goes well you know we could use rabbit hormones or maybe we could create a novel virus that only kills rabbits I'm like okay. how is that your second idea dude <laughs> we, we went from cyanide bombs to we should do rabbit COVID so fast <laughs> hear me out and that's gonna be the movie we get a rabbit a job as an airline steward <laughs> rabbit <laughs> COVID is it it's really just a flu bugs if you think about it <laughs> that was fantastic flu bugs thank that you that was fantastic Keith. I heard it I heard it <laughs> Because Bugs Bunny, fuck. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so meanwhile, so the scientists and Cole are going to load up some rabbits that they can take back to their rabbit lab, apparently, mm -hmm. right? Their rab, if you will. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Cole gets bit 
by a rabbit along the way. And I only bring that up because Roy, the, the scientist guy, he says, well, you know, the bite of the lepus can be very dangerous. I mean, <laughs> sorry, are rabbit bites dangerous? I no. can't imagine that's true. No. They're not. According to Google, no. They're like, they're like, well, yeah, I mean, anything can get infected, but no. Like when it comes to being bit by, if you had to choose the animal to be bit by, you're going to go rap. <laughs> that seems like a reward more than a penalty for something. <laughs> you're like, oh, I don't want a bite. You'd have to like pay for that. I've watched Keith get mauled by an otter and it's an ugly sight, but I feel <laughs> still I would not be worried about a rabbit. No, I have a theory about this line in this movie. This movie very clearly exists because whoever wrote it has a phobia of rabbits, right? Mm -hmm. And they got bit by a rabbit as a kid. Ra okay, like, yeah. Hey, man, relax. Stop saying you need to think about rabbits every time you jerk off. And he was like, no, I'm making a movie. <laughs> and so he put this in the movie so that the scientists he wrote could be like, yep, rabbit bites are super scary and you should be erect from now on when you think about them. <laughs> Eli, you think about your fears when you're doing that? Yeah, I mean, how do you guys Obviously. get boners? So, yeah, right. Okay. You're the weird one, Heath. See? <laughs> Two to one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm picturing Heath jerking off and going, commitment, 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 commitment. <laughs> it works. So we cut down to the rabbit lab uh, again, and, and Dad explains his first plan, which is, which is to make the rabbits non-binary. Yep. I guess. Trans yeah. rabbits. They're going to make trans rabbits because then they won't have sex. Yeah. Trans people never have sex. So that's their plan. <laughs> perfect plan. I guess. Yes. It's the perfect crime. From the generation that watches Tucker Carlson comes an understanding of trans right. rabbits. Yeah, exactly. But but that's not working. Damn it. The rabbits keep, the trans rabbits keep going into shock. Seems like they're just more sex positive and they're having more sex and they're just like <laughs> healthier people. Just emotionally, sexually fun. Fuck. Like, statistically, it's about how nice you are to the trans rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, but so that's not working. The trans rabbits are all falling into shock or whatever. And so Roy's like, well, you know, I did just get a new mystery serum that was mailed to me anonymously. Why don't we try that? This came in a Cadbury cream egg. Do you want to inject this into a rabbit? <laughs> this is a scientist being like, yes. mystery needle, I'm doing it. We did it. That's it. We were doing cyanide bombs, then um, rabbit COVID. I'm going mystery needle. That's yeah. the only other chance. Right. So, yeah. So, and, and as he's doing that, the little girl is like, but dad, that one's my favorite. Don't inject that one with the medicine. So as soon as the mom and dad turn their back, she swaps that bunny out with one of the control group bunnies. This is this is important. This is the plot. Yeah. And then the music's like, bum, 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 bum. I wanted them to be like, hey, hon, hon, did you uh, just switch a couple, sabotage our thing? Because the music changed just <laughs> right. now. Yes. She glares at the band rats. <laughs> God damn it. Tattletales. So, and she says, but when the parents turn back around, she says, like, oh, and uh, apropos of nothing, it's just while we were on this subject, you said I could have a rabbit. Can I before you kill them? And I so, that was her actual line. I so wanted dad to go, like, no, I meant after I, I was going to give you a killed one. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> fires a gun into a cage. There. There. There you go. That's the one you can have. Technically fulfilled the promise. She's just dragging it around by the ear on the ground for the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> So, yeah, but she asked for one of the control group rabbits and then takes the one that she she just secretly swapped out. That's the mutant super rabbit. And there's just one more thing. I'm sorry. I have to talk about it. I know it's a nothing, but there's this great moment where after they inject it, where the other guy goes, well, I mean, you injected that rabbit. How do we know it's contagious? And the guy's like, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. Just for the it, it rest is? of the movie. We it should... was just a mystery needle. Do you no, even but it was know a mystery it was needle. Mystery it, was, it was a contagious mystery needle. It says... it was, uh, oh, you, it says contagious, but also it's right mystery. right on the side. You yeah. mystery. Look, look, it's like when you buy the mystery packs of Squishmallows, you can smell the bottom of the mystery pack, and then you kind of have a basic idea of which Squishmallow you buy. That's, <laughs> that's what it is in the mystery packs. You get it. We're scientists. <laughs> We're scientists. It's 1970. Relax. So, so Jerry and Amanda... They headed back out to Cole's to pick up some more rabbits. And this is where, of course, Cole's son snatches Amanda's mutant super rabbit and sets it free. Yeah. Right? He's like, you can't have this rabbit pet. Rabbits killed my chickens. Yeah, rabbit, go away. We don't love you anymore. And it runs off. <laughs> I'm not sure what that solves. I'm not sure why he would have done. I really wanted him to get Monty Pythoned by that rabbit at that point, though. I was oh, like, so you kind of deserve it. Awesome. <laughs> at this point. 
And like to her credit, Amanda gets over that shit right the fuck away. Instantly. 1970s. We didn't invent an attachment to pets until 1992, folks. Oh, no, that's right. Actually, that, that is correct. Someone kicked your rabbit. Someone flung your rabbit out of the car window with a trebuchet. You didn't even notice. You were too busy <laughs> trying to survive without air conditioning. This is the <laughs> 70s, motherfuckers. <laughs> a better time. I'd trade air conditioning in my car for a trebuchet, though, if I'm being honest. That sounds fun. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But not right? for rabbits, though. Well, <laughs> so we, we we check back in at the rabbit lab and we have this weird like we never go back to this. Right. But we have this weird moment where Roy is like, oh, wow, the injected rabbits have doubled in size. We need to get bigger cages. We will never revisit this even when there are giant rabbits afoot. Nope. Right? There are giant killer rabbits later in the movie. And he's not like, oh, I should fucking go check on the lab. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Rabbits afoot. Nice. But thank you. <laughs> so then we cut to Cole. So apparently Cole is making like a fire break now to keep the rabbits from spreading. Yeah, this is confusing to me. So mm -hmm. a fire break, you burn some of your farmland like a big swath, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like the Spanish did to the Cubans. Yeah. I feel like rabbits could like walk through the swath to the other side of it. Right? Like, you would think, right? Yeah, I, I think the idea is that they would just go far enough in to go, well, hey, there's no fucking food over here, and then turn back. But yeah, I do I do believe they could make it. No, <laughs> so, trust us. It's the 1970s, and the only thing we know about rabbits is that they're quitters. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and they always do math. They'll be like, well, we've gone less than halfway, obviously, so we yeah, turn so, back, yeah, right? So we all, every one of us obviously. turn back. So <laughs> We're rabbits. And, and, and I also love that the whole time he's doing this, they're dump, dumping gasoline and shit to set his stuff on fire. There's a guy in sunglasses standing behind him going, I got an airplane filled with cyanide bombs. Why the <laughs> fuck aren't we just cyanide bombing it? So I bought these cyanide bombs for nothing, is what you're telling me. I have all these cyanide bombs and nothing to do with them. Right. Yes. Okay, in 1970-whatever, if you got your receipt, you're, you're going to get your money back for the cyanide bomb, I feel yeah, like. No, that's, fine. Fair, that's fair. That's fair, yeah. At, like, Sears. Like, whatever. <laughs> in my head, it was so <laughs> oh, no, Yeah, they, ha they had them at Lowe's. They were yeah. right next well, to the... Well, there's no Lowe's, but, yeah, but they had them at Sears. Candles. Yeah, and so they set this thing on fire. We see a bunch of rabbits running away. This is where I had to look it up, because it really looked like they set a bunch of rabbits on fire to get this shot. They didn't, though. No. Okay. So now Roy, Jerry, and Cole ride out to like look at the rabbit range, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, you know, checking on it and seeing how things are going. And they come across this giant rabbit track. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's the wife who's like, is this a giant mutant rabbit paw print? <laughs> they look at it and they're like, could be. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's probably a mountain lion with, with with rabbit shape with feet. rabbit feet yes <laughs> it's very clearly a rabbit so it's not giant though. rabbits that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> so okay and then while they're doing this apparently amanda and cole jr are out riding horses and cole jr's like hey i want to introduce you to my friend he's got a gold mine that's nearby here and i'm pretty sure he hasn't been eaten by giant rabbits recently so it should be a nice pleasant experience for all of us yeah you want to go meet a strange adult your mom said it's fine because it's the 70s <laughs> so. your mom said it's nothing because she said nothing yeah because it's the 70s so they get to the gold mine and 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 billy the guy that they're going to see he's nowhere to be found so <laughs> cole's son is like and i don't think this kid ever gets a name cole's son is like Okay, so Amanda, you go look in the dark, creepy tunnel. I'll stay out here where all the sunlight is. <laughs> he 100% meaty heats him. 100%. <laughs> cool. All right, so let's allocate the labor fairly. You go into the tunnel full of ominous squeaking, and I'll stay out here where we already looked. <laughs> Just, um... When she goes in, I thought for sure there was going to be a giant rabbit eating Captain Billy like a carrot, just like holding him. From oh, the side. nice. Oh, it would be amazing. <laughs> no. Holds him between his teeth. I mean, there is a giant rabbit eating Billy in there, but yeah, not in the. Not yeah. like a carrot. They never not lean like into the carrots thing. That's just like. No. That's the number one thing about rabbits that we all know from Bugs Bunny. It's carrots, right? Yep. And no one yep. at any point says, What's up, Doc? Right. There, know, is, there are doctors in the movie. Yes, Nobody says there are hunting wabbits. Docs. There's no Elmer Fudd references. No Daffy no one Duck. Puts a sign. Thank wabbit you. season, duck season. No Wagner kill the wabbit. I was I was looking for that the whole time. I was mad. Yep. A lot of missed opportunities in this film. So we get Cole Jr. wandering around in Billy's uh, shack or whatever. And we get the like shelf falling down jump scare. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. They needed they needed a jump scare, and they went with shelf just falls off the wall. The bolts burst into flame, yep. and a shelf <laughs> falls did, off the wall. Disappear, <laughs> get transferred into another dimension. Yeah, what what could make a noise? Shelf falling, a cyanide bomb, or it's shelf falling off the wall. <laughs> yeah, Those are right. two, yeah. Options. two options. Yeah. So so then we cut into the mine where Amanda's still looking for Billy and she finds his dead body. And then she looks up and she sees a giant rabbit with bloody rabbit jaws that no shit growls at her. <laughs> <laughs> I love this and so long. Let's be clear. <laughs> oh this is God. not a fake giant rabbit. What they did is they took a regular rabbit, put a little red paint on its face. Ketchup. And yeah. then did a close up. Yes. Right? And the rabbit is very clearly like, eh, they, they sprayed me with a thing. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so the the big growls, as it turns out, that's the rabbits yawning. So if you imagine how cute <laughs> a regular so cute. rabbit is, now imagine a rabbit yawning. That's the thing we're supposed to be scared of. <laughs> Why is he so tired? <laughs> hey, busy day. God, it's so good. And again, they're trying to do like a menacing moment, and they zoom in on a rabbit's tiny little mouth movements, and I just yes. laughed even longer because it's just oh. like. Mm-hmm. I wrote in my notes, you know how it's impossible to make rabbits look scary? Well, you and no one involved in the making of this film. Because again, I have to emphasize this movie is as earnest as it could possibly be. <laughs> it really does want to scare you with these goddamn uh, rabbits. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, but she's the, the rabbit growls at her. She screams. And then we cut immediately to her back home in shock being seen to by the doctor. And can I just say I miss scream transitions from 1970s creature features so bad that just, oh, what could it have been, doctor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tar is missing out. Yeah. And 70s doctor is like, oh, it's just mild shock from giant rabbit or whatever. She's fine. Yeah, it's normal. Uh, give her a few cigarettes, calm the nerves. You're good. <laughs> She's seven. He goes, if anything new develops, call me. And I'm like, what, if she also gets attacked by a giant tortoise? What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. So then we cut. It's that night. And we cut to a semi truck driving down the road in the middle of the night. And the guy stops to check on his giant truck full of vegetables. (laughs) Okay. They they maybe sort of hit carrot here the one time. When you were watching this truck drive down the road. Did you all not want a giant rabbit to just like run out into the road and flip it over like a superhero moment? I was so pissed Punch when that did not it. happen. Yeah, right. Like the Hulk. <laughs> no. But yeah, so he's checking on this load and he hears growling in the background. Now, you might be thinking to yourself like, well, I wonder what they're going to do to make the rabbits look big enough to attack people. It's nothing. It's literally nothing. They just show us person and then rabbit and then person. <laughs> so... <laughs> And they zoom in on the one buck tooth of a rabbit yes. at one point. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be clear, is what this movie is proposing is that this rabbit knows it needs to be sneaky? Yes. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, they're surrounding him. The rabbits are using coordinated attack movements like the fucking Flanking. raptors in Jurassic Park. Be very quiet. I'm hunting humans. <laughs> See, that would have been a good move right there. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. if he had turned, if he had gotten like a tap on the shoulder and turned around, and there was a giant rabbit there. This is my favorite <laughs> movie. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Either this movie needs a minute to figure out how to make rabbits scary or we need a minute to cope with the fact that they're never gonna. Either way, we need another break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more Night of the Lepus. I'm telling you, Steve, something's got to be done about these rabbits. They're eating me out of house and home. The only solution is cyanide. Oh, um, I, I don't know if cyanide's necessary. Did you try a fence? No, no. But even if I did, that wouldn't save the horses. They've killed two of my best horses. Uh, I mean, the horse tripped, not uh, not exactly killed by the rabbits, right? Look, Steve, I know you're a softie, but you got to look at this reasonably. These rabbits, they keep eating and they keep breeding. And eventually, they'll be infinity rabbits. The whole world mm. will be made out of rabbits. And then what happens? That's right. Rabbit space program. Rabbits spreading out across the universe. What? Like a giant hive mind plague. Our only choice is to light our land on fire and then poison that land. Or, like I was saying, you could build a fence. Ah, fences are boring. Okay. 
And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action the following morning with a police car pulling up on the scene of that heinous bunny heist from the night before. <laughs> right. And at first I thought, cause like he, he doesn't see the body. And at first I'm like, Oh, the rabbits ate him bones and all, but no, <laughs> no, the cop follows a trail of shredded clothes to find the best worst corpse of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's the wrong number of limbs in the pile. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> there's just the placement of the blood is so aggressively random. There was very clearly, a, okay, but don't get none on my shoes, though. I like these shoes <laughs> kind of a moment there. The, he's missing. He's got one arm chopped off. There's no blood at the shoulder or at the top of the arm whatsoever, but there's plenty on his calves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this corpse is supposed to be nibbled to death like that's the canon of the right, movie yes but th they went insane with their corpse and i i liked the actor playing the sheriff here who has to be like uh how do i just visibly respond to a rabbit mauling this is so <laughs> silly <laughs> he seems, he seems so my left foot ain't got nothing on this sheriff who has to get out of his cop car and see a <laughs> nibbled to death body and look solemn about it well and let's be clear here we say nibbled to death but the body is like like clearly the arm has been exactly cleaved off one of the legs has been chopped like, like right because like when the other when the backup cop shows up he's like well what was that an axe and it's like you would think based on the <laughs> condition of the fucking body yeah which again is because the guy who has a phobia of rabbits was like but no think about it guys what's a big rabbit tooth super scary no it's an axe it's like an axe <laughs> also they might be holding an axe some rabbits you don't know could they have the paws they, grab, they could have an axe well and i i just i have to point this moment out because it's great The the sheriff shows up right and he says to the deputy he's like what's so urgent i'm like i feel like you would have told him dead body before he came all the way out right and then he looks at the dead body and goes oh no nope that's fair that is that is urgent that's the kind of thing you're supposed to go me about okay it's a secret just come out <laughs> why are you being weird man just come out it's the 70s and while they're out they're checking out this body they get a call about billy's body right so the rabbits are on a fucking rampage now fuck yeah they are so, okay, so then we cut over to the fucking, I don't know, Chumway, Arizona crime lab or, or whatever, and the coroner opens the scene by explaining the concept of forensics at length. <laughs> he's, he's doing a spoken word poem about weapons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, really emotional. He's doing, like, a soliloquy. Yeah, yeah. right. It's like, I feel like they know why... You look at stuff in microscopes, dude. You don't. Have, you. I would. I wonder if he does this every time they come by. They're like, we we know, Larry. We've heard this shtick before, <laughs> man. Every time someone new is in town, they're like, go send him to Larry so he can do his weird <laughs> word poem thing. The knife is the door that opens up your body. Okay. <laughs> I like that Larry also explained to them that no, this was not an axe involved in, <laughs> in this murder. Yes, because he's got a can. From, I guess, inside that truck. And he's like, well, an axe didn't open up this. Can Have you guys ever seen an axe or a rabbit? What are you <laughs> talking about? This is clearly about? a punctured can, man. Yeah, he says it was definitely an animal attack. And the cop says, an animal attack? Really? He's like, well, look for yourself. And the mo the cop looks into the microscope. Yeah, good, good. Get the cop looking at the microscope. Yes. That's, that's helpful. That'll help. And we see what the cop sees. And it's just cells moving around. And the cop has to be like, Yep, animal Is this an onion skin? <laughs> That's all I know from school. <laughs> so the cop says, well, what do we have, vampires? And I'm like, well, there are bears in your part of the country. And he's like, no, it was probably saber-toothed tigers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, are there still saber-toothed tigers? <laughs> hey, man. Could you list some real shit first? Yes. Could you start with some <laughs> things that exist? <laughs> so yeah, they seem to move past Bear way too fast. And then we cut to, I, I feel like they know they flubbed their first corpse and their corpse guy was like, let me give it another shot. Let me give it another shot with a family of four, y'all. I can do this. Give me four more chances. I'll make <laughs> a realistic body. Are you just going to have four teenagers, you know, smear ketchup on their tummies? No, it, <laughs> no, no. also I'll do uh, <laughs> on one of their backs. Also, I was thinking rabbit chainsaw attack this time. <laughs> Chainsaw? And then, so then we cut to 
Roy and Jerry down at the rabbit lab again. This time they're talking with the the guy in the wheelchair, the birth defect specialist guy. Yeah. The one who's like, look, I know all about abnormalities. I'm in a wheelchair. Yes, that's the guy. <laughs> Yeah. so awful. He says, quote, I like to pretend they don't exist, but they do. And I wrote my notes, abnormalities? Why, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I couldn't pay attention to anything this guy said because he had a weird free-floating apostrophe of hair in his otherwise bald fucking head. <laughs> yep. And it kept just weirding me that I just stared at it the whole time. A single swirl of baby hair in an island. Like Charlie Brown. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking nuts yeah and he's just explaining that like yeah no this is just basic dna it's a giant rabbit because of a dna mutation yeah just, question though did anyone inject like one single rabbit with i don't know a mystery needle because that would oh. describe <laughs> who would have this what what's happened oh. here for sure i can't even imagine he, he turns to roy turns to his wife at this point and he's like all right we're gonna have to go out tomorrow get the best damn rabbit assassins you know <laughs> <laughs> He says, he says, to tell him to bring cyanide and dynamite. I'm like, all right, Elmer, slow the fuck down here. What are you talking about? Dynamite. Get one of those big cartoon bombs. You know, the big round black ones in the long thing. Jerry, get me Acme. Yeah. Yeah. And then the head of the university is like, okay, so should we tell people that there are giant killer rabbits on the loose who have already killed? The only thing we can do is investigate with no outside help. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's also this great moment where they're, they they go to leave and, and the one scientist guy's like, any chance you could be bring me one of these giant killer rabbits back alive? And then Roy looks at him like, any chance you could bring me something alive? That's what you, it's you. That's what you sound It's like. the fucking weirdest <laughs> moment in the movie because the movie, the camera turns to him like he has a line and he's just like, eh. Yeah. Eh, eh. Doesn't say anything. <laughs> no. And then the camera's like, oh, I thought you had another line. And then the fucking scene ends. Yes. And of course, in the next scene, we have to be very, very quiet because they're, they're hunting rabbits. <laughs> so they go to the mine, right? Because that's where Billy died. That's where they found his body. And they're like, Okay, look, there's there's no way our rabbit effects are going to work in broad daylight. We need to go into that creepy tunnel over there. That's probably where they are. Really wanted a shot of this rabbit walking through a crowd in Rome like Hannibal picks up the phone. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Mr. Doctor. So, but, but this is where they come up with the plan of dynamiting the entrance to the mine. Right, because they're like, well, you know, rabbits, what, what are they going to burrow? <laughs> rabbits? Give me a fucking, we just blow the entrance to the mine and and the movie's over, right? Wouldn't that make sense? I feel like they gave dynamite to too many people in the 70s. I want right. dynamite to be harder <laughs> to get, generally. So he said they realize, of course, that there are vertical shafts leading out of the mine as well. So they need to blow those two in case the, I don't know, in case the rabbit's chimney climb. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Well, they wall jump. You know, they wall jump. Oh, right. Yeah, left to right because yeah. they'd be really close mm -hmm. together. No, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Also, <laughs> they seem quite certain that all the giant rabbits live in this one uh, giant rabbit cave, which is the only yes. hospitable environment for that <laughs> new species. For giant rabbits. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So they send a couple of the guys up to the top of the mountain to put dynamite in the vertical shafts while they stay down at the base. This is where we get the guy who like drops the rock down to gauge the depth, but it lands on a rabbit who growls rabbit back at him. Yells at him. <laughs> yes. What what could break the tension of your movie more than one second? <laughs> Fuck ow! <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> ow. I'm a fucking rabbit. There's nothing less scary than rabbit noises. They don't even yes. do the gra it's like the that's the sound. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way we need to dynamite whatever made that yeah, noise. No, right. I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> so, if the rock got thrown back up and hits him in the face. That would be good. That would be some good shit. <laughs> okay, but they're all set up to blow up the mine. But before they do, Roy has to heroically enter the mine in the name of science. Yeah. Why? He's like, yeah, don't blow it up yet. I'm going to grab one alive before we solve the problem that is terrifying. I'm going to just run in there and get one. Right, wrestle one. He doesn't even have rope. He's not even going to lasso the damn thing. He's just, yeah. He's gonna What's the plan? Him. I grab one and beat it out of it. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm pretty sure 
I could go in there and offer them a reasonable stipend to come work at my office. Yeah. <laughs> you know what rabbits love? Unpaid internships. I'll oh, there just you go. go yeah. In. Yeah. I'll explain that it's great exposure. And Cole's like, well, I'll be damned if I'm going to let you be the only heroic one. I'm going in with you. And the wife, she's like, why the fuck would you go in? He's like, because of the mystery. I have to solve the mystery. What? Not a mystery, man. What it's mystery? giant killer rabbits. <laughs> it's giant rabbits. You just threw a rock down and heard them. You heard them. Right. So, but they go in anyway. There's this moment where like, there's a bunch of bats flying through the cave and shit. And we're like, we're, as if the movie's going like, okay, rabbits are not, but bats are scary though, right? They're scary. They're even small. Oh, I wanted one rabbits. huge bat just sitting in a recliner. Like, <laughs> oh. It's, it's jumped species. You're not going to believe what happened. I fucked this rabbit the other day. <laughs> And I got bigger. I don't know what happened. So I'm on this air, airplane, right? And the steward comes over. And he's a rabbit. <laughs> AIDS. It's an AIDS reference. So, okay. So so they're running through the, the cave. Up top, everybody's ready to blow the tunnel. But they get the, the call that they can't do that yet because it's barely even act two. Okay. Just once in one of these movies when someone's like, don't blow it now. There's a single guy in there doing a thing. I want the other guy to be like, no. Yeah, right. Right. That would have been awesome. <laughs> no, it sounds sad for your friend. Boom. There we go. <laughs> Problem solved. So, yeah. So, but, and then of course, in the tunnel, the rabbits are drawing them in just like the Russians did to Napoleon. Sure. Right. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it's weird that the rabbits, the giant rabbits do, you know, adorable squeaky noises, but also... Roar like a giant pug demon or whatever. Yes, like right. Just the physics of vocal cords. I feel like you're not, you have to <laughs> chop it. You, you got one or the other. Yeah. Pick a noise your giant rabbit makes. Yeah, exactly. So, but eventually they, they come out into this tunnel and they see the giant rabbits. And as you can imagine, it's, they nail it graphically. They, like you can really, you really feel that they're in the same room with these giant rabbits. <laughs> there might as well just be a big ass TV playing giant rabbit footage behind, them, right? <laughs> you see, he goes to take pictures. Roy goes, "Don't nobody will ever believe this." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's because the effects are so bad. Man. This is just terrible. <laughs> You've somehow messed up perspective, and that's just a thing eyes do, guys. Yeah. That's just a thing <laughs> your normal human eyes can do." He goes, there must be thousands of them. And I'm like, relax, man. There's 14 in the time. We can see, we can see 14 of them. Okay. <laughs> but I guess right, when he takes the pictures, that's the signal that the rabbits agreed to attack on. Right. Cause they all, Oh, we find out that they hate <laughs> light later. And so the flash. Oh, all right. No, you're uh, right. Freaked them out. Because rabbits are famously nocturnal. No, they're not. Well, no, if you look at the top of their OnlyFans, they say that the photos are just, you have to subscribe. <laughs> oh, okay, right. No, that makes oh, sense. I'll have to save them. So, yeah, so they start running from the giant rabbits. In my notes, I'm like, well, but I, you would, wouldn't you at least want to try to give them belly rubs, though, first? But no, they don't. <laughs> they just run. I wanted them to be like, in order to escape a rabbit, we've got to think like a rabbit, and they're hopping away from them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, so inside the cave, we're getting a hair-raising chase. But, but outside, it's... <laughs> So fucking cute. <laughs> Boo. No, okay, so so as they're running, Roy gets jumped or hopped, if you will, uh, by Boo. one of the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> How did Cecil get into your notes, though? What happened? <laughs> I know not a lot happens in this movie, and Noah was like, all right, oh, rabbit puns, I'm going back. I gotta go, I gotta add something. <laughs> so now, but we've also established now that because they brought the shotgun with them, but they've established that Cole can't use it because if he did, the mine would cave in, which presumably they would have known before they went in. Well, he brought it because, as everyone knows, rabbits are very shy of firearms. <laughs> yeah, I guess. He, he, well, That's yeah. why when he walked in, that rabbit very clearly said out loud in English, whoa, that guy's got a fucking gun. Yeah. <laughs> so so meanwhile, so they're they're running. Uh, Cole whacks one of the bunnies with a gun butt to get up. And and keep in mind that it, like yes, wax a bunny with a gun butt. That's what we're looking at, right? Yeah. Every time they have to fight the bunnies, we're like, oh poor bunny. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it's also a guy in like not a rabbit costume. Like yes. they got a gorilla costume, and they're like from the back, it kind of looks Which like a rabbit. If you put the ears on it, yeah. Just punch it. <laughs> so. See if you can tie the gun barrels into like a bow. <laughs> no. Okay. And to be clear, 
as this is happening, we're also watching being chased by rabbits footage, the least scary thing possible. Well, and just in case it wasn't cute enough, they put it into slow motion as if, oh, here comes the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> It's and so okay, th then we cut outside and we're reminded that oh, yeah, rabbits can fucking dig, right? So, one of the guys that's helping, one of the ranch hands, this guy named Judd, he's in the tent when a bunny comes like digs his way through the floor and attacks him. It rears up like a bear and goes right for his jugular. So, wait, <laughs> there was one fucking Steven Seagal behind enemy yes. lines bunny yeah. who was like. <laughs> Rises out of the floor with a knife between his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, special hops. Because <laughs> <laughs> rabbit. No, that's good. That was good. So, yeah. So, but, but Jerry hears him yelling. She runs and she shoots the bunny. These bunnies are bulletproof, right? Because over and over again, they shoot these fucking rabbits and nothing really happens. But he does run off. She's like, it's okay, Judd. The rabbit's gone. You can chill the fuck out now, right? I thought he was going to turn into a giant rabbit or like a giant oh, human rabbit a hybrid. Now. Rabbit. Oh, that, yeah, that would have been and pretty fucking good. he fucks a lot. Much better than what happened in the movie. <laughs> Has a bunch so, of rabbit human hybrid kids. Yeah, there you go. Maybe he fucks that big bat too. I don't oh, know. Oh, they they could have gone a lot of different directions. This here. could have been a trilogy, yes. So, But Cole and Roy reach the exit of the mine and then they blow it up right they they hit the dynamite just then and there's a great big cinematic explosion and then there's the moment where eli was talking about where everybody just sort of stands around and goes well shit um <laughs> no not very far into this movie yet. honestly if a single paw had burst up through the dirt in this moment <laughs> this would be <laughs> my favorite movie just the peter griffin chicken eye opens right yeah, up right, the rabbit right. eye. So, okay, so then we cut over to them developing the footage from the pictures that he took. I, I just love this one moment where one of the scientists goes, how in the world is that possible? And I'm like, forced perspective. It's just um, the rabbits are actually in front of him <laughs> in that moment. But it's, <laughs> yeah, and, and this is where they agree that they do have to tell the public about the giant killer rabbits they accidentally made, though, right? This is why your grandma won't get vaccinated, everybody. These are the movies she grew up on. She's like, no, no, no. I know about the mystery serum that comes in those. Not going to be tricking me, turning me into a giant rabbit. Yeah, right. So he's like, oh, you know, the, once the newspapers find out about these giant killer rabbits, we're going to have a lot of reporters around annoying us. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's the real problem with giant killer rabbits is the annoying reporters. It's the mystery needle that you shot into a rabbit, man. <laughs> all your fault. Don't do mystery needles. Look, we can all agree it was a bad idea to make wolf-sized killer rabbits. But have we considered the threat of the international Jew? <laughs> <laughs> So that so he sends Jerry and Amanda, his wife and his kid away. He's like, hey, look, we're obviously in a horror movie. Women and kids, they just get in the way or get captured in these fucking things or something. Why don't you guys leave and uh, I'll, you know, I'll rescue you in act three or whatever. And they're like, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. What was with their little couple cutesy line together? Again, th yes, thank you. They, I'd work with you. And then at the same time, they go sandwiches. Timbuktu. Oh, you said, I said sandwiches. You said Timbuktu? One, two, let's do it, it again. It never comes back. It never two, matters. No, nope, they Pump never say fade. it again. Nope. I would work with you even in Africa. Wait, what? <laughs> so, and then we, we cut back to the burrow because the, the rabbits are like, these idiots know we can dig, right? Like that hopping in carrots, that's pretty much our whole fucking thing. More scary rabbit shots. It's like if Jaws was a goldfish is how silly. <laughs> but like, I mean, the food, like a plushie of the yep, food, no, like mm -hmm, Dory sure. from Finding Nemo is the, the horror <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so the rabbits are on the prowl again. We have this like the scene where the horses are all freaking out because they can sense giant killer rabbits afoot again. Okay, I feel like horses can still easily win the fight. They're, okay, the rabbits are a little bigger now. Horses, though? You would think. I could beat up, I think, two horses. <laughs> okay, I know you can't beat no, up two horses. No. Two horses? Not only do I feel confident you can't beat up two horses, Come on. I would be willing to arrange that fight because I wouldn't be worried about the horses. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in close. I'm going to grapple it up. No, nope. <laughs> you sure are. Inside their guard, right? That's what you always that's say. That's true. No, that's for bears. Horses don't have a guard. That's their uh, secret. That's horses have a guard. That's, that's true. It's all low, but you, right? <laughs> you get on their back. You're, you got it. 
Yeah, right. No, you got to you choke them out. Now you're just riding a horse. So, you haven't thought this through. Yeah, and that's winning. That's I win then. <laughs> I don't think that counts. So, all right. So then Cole, of course, he hears the horses freaking out, the dogs freaking out. So he has to go check it out. Has to go see what's up. <laughs> okay. Based on movies, most of owning a ranch is walking outside angrily to be like, yes, what the right. fuck is that? Yes. Yep. <laughs> also, big credits to this dog giving one of the best performances in the movie because he's like, oh, I'm going to go see what that is. And the dog is like, fuck that, man. This is not my drama. Yeah, I'm going to be <laughs> right? inside. I'll stay back here. You tell me how it was. And then so we then we see the rabbit stamping in. And this is, I think, the first time that we see like a bunch of rabbits on like a little town set, right? They have their own little stop signs and little tiny fences to run by and shit so yeah. that they look big. This first time we see them on like a hill, uh -huh. right? Like it's the Battle of fucking Mordor. <laughs> right? It's a strike team of rabbits sneaking up on the horses. They're like military crawling up to a ridge. It's yes. the best. <laughs> it's going under some barbed wire. Is the Hair Force. Special nice. Ops team. Nice. <laughs> really wanted a rabbit Mel Gibson to, you know, get out there and deliver us. Yeah, right. They'll never take your freedom or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, but the rabbits ride in against the horses. Now, they massacre the horses. I was hoping that they would subdue the horses and then ride back into the ranches yes! on the backs of the horses. But that doesn't, we don't, they just kill the horses. <laughs> so, and also to his credit, Judd, the ranch hand that got attacked by the rabbits earlier, just dips the fuck out. He just takes the truck. He's like, I'm out. I'm not in the movie anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I quit the movie. Yeah. But of course, in his attempt to escape, he just comes across the murderous rabbit horde en route. It's so silly. He might as well turn a corner and like bump into a big rabbit's back. Oh, oh. <laughs> or a rabbit rises up from the back seat and he's in the front. Right. So, yeah. So now we, keep in mind that we have no reason to believe that he's not safe in his truck. Right? Yes. I, like, I mean, I don't think the rabbits can open the doors, but you could lock them anyway. <laughs> no, nope. to be very clear, throughout the rest of the movie, it will be established that rabbits cannot get in vehicles. Yeah. I don't think you have to establish that. They just can't. No, I think they that's just wouldn't. Known. <laughs> like, oh, now they're wolf size. You know how wolves can't get into your car? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. But he turns around and he runs away from him. Cole is calling for help just then, but Judd runs into the telephone pole, crashes into the telephone pole in his panic to get away from the murder rabbits. He's hair triggered. Yes. <laughs> hair. <laughs> yep. So that, but then he gets out of the vehicle, right? Because why wouldn't you at this point? And then he trips and the, and the rabbits murder him because mm -hmm. they're murder rabbits. So, okay. So back inside the ranch, Cole Scott, he's like sending his family down into the cellar. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no way that rabbits can get underground. Good. Good on you, man. <laughs> yeah. Go anywhere else would be bet literally anywhere. A car. Yep. Up instead of down. <laughs> yeah, in yeah, exactly. Up the stairs. Yes. <laughs> there are so They'll many solutions. They'll never find us in this carrot field. Everyone, bury yourself <laughs> up to the neck. <laughs> Pour tar on yourselves in this carrot patch. What? <laughs> So, yeah, so everybody runs down to the cellar and then I guess the rabbits gather around like they're going to starve the family out. <laughs> right, like they're going to have a siege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is where they're in the dollhouse and it's super fucking adorable. Oh, with the little kitchen, the tiny little kitchen, little kitchen filled with little giant cups. rabbits. Yes. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> The music might as well just be a guy yelling, take it seriously at this point in the movie. <laughs> so, the music is doing its best. And the music is working so fucking hard to scare us of these fucking rabbits. Mm -hmm. At one point, the rabbits start to nibble their way through the floor. And I was like, if a rabbit sticks its face through this hole and says, here's Johnny, here's Bunny, <laughs> so this is my favorite movie. This is my favorite movie in the world. Here's Johnny. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Oh. So it would be here, here's Peter probably, but yeah, but I I get what you're saying. But uh, I was going with here's Bunny, but I, uh, I don't yeah, know. no, that's close, that's close. So, but the, and of course, the reason that the rabbit is able to do that is because Cole's dumbass keeps shooting at the bunnies through the floor of his cellar or the ceiling of his cellar, the floor of his house, right? 
Yeah. He's shooting through the door at bunnies. He's shooting through the floor. But I'm like, you're safe until you start doing that, you dumb fuck. <laughs> he's, he, he, he might as well dig a hole through the dirt out there to shoot them and then be yes. like, okay, I got one. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're coming in. Ah, damn it. So, and then like reserve bunnies show up. Like they had a reserve line that came up behind. Anyway, so meanwhile, the operator, so when, when Cole was trying to call for help, he got in touch with the operator and then the line cut out. And it's barely worth talking about the scene where we go back to Dorothy, the operator, except that this is where we see the checkers. God damn it. <laughs> you see, it's only one move. It is a legal move, but literally the guy who makes one move that doesn't help is about to get triple jumped for a king and then they yep. cut away from it. Yeah. Just learn the get, get <laughs> what one movie can't learn one game they show. Yeah. Ever. Jesus. But she's like, hey, you know, so, sounds like there's something going on at the coal ranch. You guys want to go check it out? Could be murder bunnies. And they're like, nope, we do not want to check it out. Bye. <laughs> no. No. So they leave. They, uh, they This is also, I guess, the the general store. So the two guys leave. They leave the the woman there that that's that's running the place. And then this actress has the second hardest acting performance of the movie after the sheriff, which is that she has to look out the window and act. Is that a herd of giant rabbits? <laughs> oh, that's a herd of giant rabbits. <laughs> oh, no. What a terrifying herd of giant rabbits. It's, it's either rabbits or a T-Rex because they're equal in size. Yeah, and right. No, exactly. Shaking amount. Based on the amount of shaking going on in the general store there. Yeah. So like, yeah, the, the horde of giant murder bunnies comes. Maybe it's saber tooth tigers. I don't know. It could be any of these things. We'll find out. Vampires. Yeah. And then, of course, one of the rabbits leaps through the window and rips her throat <laughs> out. <laughs> I really wanted to see a rabbit just smash into the glass and not break it. And just Amazing. like slide down the window. <laughs> and it squeak down. <laughs> yeah. So, so then the, the two guys that just left, one of them drops off the other guy. So he's walking up to his house and he hears something suspicious behind him. Because apparently the rabbits are approximately the same speed as his friend's pickup truck. Is that a... Is that a rabbit stampede? <laughs> <laughs> Even the noise that like the the Foley guy made for the stampede of rabbits is adorable. Right. It's so yeah. cute. You it's can't like, not. So, yeah. So it, it, and we have this moment of like, you know, can he unlock his door in time? But he keeps stopping to look back to see if there's a rabbit stampede. There's like, well, man, if you stop doing that, you could. You would have time to do it. But he doesn't. <laughs> And so, of course, the rabbit stampede catches up with him, and he also is murdered by rabbits. It's like they shot the end of the movie, and they were like, fuck, 30 minutes. Do you, do you just want to do more rabbit murder? Yeah, we still have yep. the costume. <laughs> All right, well, if this movie's already resorting to filler, I suppose we can, too. So we're going to pause for another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Roy pull a bugs, dress as a hot lady rabbit, and lure them away? Oh, my God, yes. Will Cole chop off one of their feet with an axe and then drag it around on a super awkward keychain for the rest of the movie? <laughs> and if not, why didn't this movie have any fucking guts? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the adorable conclusion of Night of the Lepus. All right, everybody. I'm Sheriff Paw Paw McGoogle. And y'all know we're in a horror movie with a monster that can't get inside a car. So the mayor wants me to tell all of you here to go over some basic safety tips. First of all, don't leave your cars. End of list. Any questions? Yeah. Um. If I hear a mysterious noise, should I go, you know, check that out? Nope. No, don't do that. Because that would be leaving your car. The one thing we established that the monster cannot enter. I have a question. Uh, yeah. Little Timmy, go. I, well, I'm a little scamp. A, a, a rep scallion, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, should I go exploring when mother looks the other way? Um, oh, and if he does, should I say, oh, no, little Timmy, and just run after him as fast no, as no, I can? No, neither of you should do that. Just stay in cars. And if somebody leaves that car, do not follow them. This really could not be simpler. What, what was that? Let's go see. Yeah, but separately. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit we're going to rejoin the action at uh, dawn the following day we get Roy sending Jerry and Amanda away for realsies this time and their reaction to this whole thing is so flippant it was just like man 
I created a horde of murder rabbits. Now we got to deal with them. Yes. <laughs> Darling, I'm afraid you've got to go up to the summer house a day early. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Mrs. Wife and Ms. Daughter have to drive upstate or whatever to get out of the movie for a while. Yeah. So they leave and then Bones shows up to pick him up to go meet with the with the sheriff and, you know, I guess coordinate the defense against the murder bodies. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I have to point out that up until this moment in the movie, there hasn't really been a plan against the murder bunnies. And now there's a fully fleshed out statewide plan. Yes. Without anyone letting us know why. As though there were contingencies for this sort of thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the sheriff shows up and he's like, uh, did I hear you correctly? Giant murder rabbits. We're doing code giant murder rabbits because that's yeah. a serious thing <laughs> that we have. Well, it, the sheriff even says, yeah, I got back from the big crime lab out in Phoenix. They told me it's a giant rabbit. I'm like, I, I, I'm dying to know what tests they ran to determine that based on the autopsies. I want to hear Larry's poem about the giant murder rabbits. Yeah. That they found. <laughs> so, but they get in a helicopter because apparently this movie had helicopter money to go check out the mine. All together. Then we cut to, for just a minute, we cut to Cole walking down the road trying to hitchhike with a shotgun in his hand. <laughs> and we watched the couple who didn't pick him up. And the, the wife is like, honey, why didn't you pick up that armed old man? And the husband's like, did you hear what you said? Did you hear the <laughs> armed old man? Well, that's why we're not doing that. Well, and apparently he realizes that, right? Because he looks at his gun and he's like, oh, I know he's going to pick me up with this. So he just tosses it into a ditch. And I'm like, yeah, oh, what possible negative repercussion could there be from randomly discarding a loaded shotgun into the fucking di I want it so bad for one of the bunnies to have that gun later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a rifle axe. What the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, he's, he's cornered the bunnies in the last act of the film. He's about to pull the switch to kill them all. And then there's just a gunshot and the bunny on the hill. Yeah. The Steven Seagal bunny from earlier. <laughs> Grassy so, Knoll. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, and, and there we, we cut to the family that didn't pick them up as though they're going to be major characters in the film, right? They're like, oh, we should stop at that next town so the kids can get drinks. And then they come by the, the general store where the woman's gotten been murdered by the, the bunnies. And they're like, ah, it doesn't look like they're open. And then they leave and we never see them again. <laughs> Holy shit. This gas station got destroyed by rabbits. Let's get the fuck out of yeah, this Yeah, right. This is a horror movie. Fuck. Let's go. <laughs> so. I wrote in my notes. I get it. I live off 295. Sometimes you yeah. pull up and the gas station's <laughs> been destroyed by rabbits. And sure. So then we cut to Jerry and Amanda. They're out on the road. Of course, she doesn't know how to drive because she's in a great big truck and she's a lady. I almost went for best worst being in trouble because she might as well just like back into a tar pit and be like, there we go. In distress. Nailed yeah, it. Exactly. Exactly. Check. We need to pull over. There's a little quicksand right here. I'm just going to go. Right. And that's what happens. She drives into like a sand dune in the middle of the road. Yeah. Yeah. And then she really grinds that tire down to get it good and stuck. And she's like, all right, well, that ought to hold through act three. Yeah. Like me trying to back through a tree branch. Just, yeah, well, I know so if actually, I keep yeah. <laughs> believing. So and now and, and elsewhere, of course, Cole now comes by the general store and he sees the havoc that the bunnies have wrought. But he also sees that this is where the bunnies are hiding. <laughs> the, again, <laughs> thousands of giant wolf sized bunnies are in the general store. They're just hanging out, like eating all the Doritos. <laughs> talking yes. to each other. They're, it's a squad of evil rabbits doing my dream as a kid. Right. Like seriously, my dream was to be like in a convenience store, free reign over all the shelves. So I, 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 I honestly thought that it was just to be in a room filled with bunnies like that. But yeah. Yeah. Was, that, was, that was, that would have been mine. Right. So yeah, but I love Cole. Like he, he gets by by just like, going like Lulu Lou doing non-threatening stuff, I guess, right? <laughs> he wanders he, off. He slowly backs off like it's a biker bar. Right. I wrote in my notes, uh, he acts like he stumbled onto an orgy. He's just like, oh, <laughs> sorry, wrong room. He might as well get into an elevator. Bing. <laughs> oh my God. I just realized how hard it must have been to shoot these bunny shots without any of the bunnies fucking each other. Oh, right? yeah. Well, again, another fun IMDb fact from the IMDb for this movie. They started out with two or three rabbits, and then they multiplied throughout the course of the filming, and the director was like, hey, this is great. Let's make it a stampede of killer rabbits instead mm -hmm. of just one or two. Yeah. 
So, okay. So that we check back in with Roy Bones and the sheriff. They, they go back to the dynamited mine and they're like, oh, fucking rabbits can fucking dig. I don't know why I didn't think about this. I'm a rabbitologist. Like, that's my whole yeah. thing. <laughs> he goes, looks like some survived and got out. And I wrote my notes. You think? <laughs> When the helicopter's flying around, I thought a giant rabbit was going to jump up and like eat the oh, chopper. Oh, like right. Megalodon like, style? Yeah, like a Megalodon. Yeah, so exactly. Good. Right, right. Fucking movie didn't have any guts. So yeah, so they're like, okay, we need to call out the National Guard, send them, you know, have them send the, the murder bunny contingent, apparently. Yeah, that must have been a weird day at the base. All right, everyone. Um... Load up some machine guns. Uh, you know those mystery vials we were given? Yeah, yeah. No, someone <laughs> I knew that put was going to bite us in the ass. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And then, of course, we get a quick scene of Cole finally getting somebody to stop for him. It's a priest. Totally a god-awful movie. It counts. Yeah. Right? If only he knew how much scarier a Catholic priest in a van is than killer <laughs> rabbits. Uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm just walking yeah. right here. I, I, this is for fun. Oh, uh, why please, did I throw away my gun? Please keep driving. Oh, shit. He goes, what's the trouble? And, and Cole goes, would you believe murder bunnies? The, the actual line is, he goes, he goes, if you if I told you, you'd think I was drinking, father. And then he gets in the car with him. So we cut back to the Sheriff Bones and Royer back at the sheriff's office coordinating the rabbit defense with the National Guard representative, right? Yeah, and I'm going to simplify this for you because the movie does not make it clear. The plan is to make a big, long fence, but at one point someone goes, we're going to bomb the town, and no one goes like, that's a bad idea. Let's not do that yeah. one. The person who said bomb the town. Well, and and it's not, the plan isn't even to make a giant fence. It's even dumber than that, but we'll get to it. Yeah, they, that, that's their immediate go-to is like, oh, right, yeah, we just nuke it from orbit. And they're like, there's people in the town, though, and rabbits. And they're like, God damn it, that's going to make it weird now. Right, but there is a ticking clock. They somehow know exactly what direction the rabbit stampede is heading and that it won't divert. Mm -hmm. And they know approximately how long it'll take. They have like two hours on the ticking clock now. Well, right. So so in this movie, rabbits are nocturnal. Again, rabbits are not nocturnal. They're crepuscular, right? They're, they're like dawn and evening, generally speaking. But in this movie, the rabbits can only come out at night. They're vampire rabbits or something. Noah, I don't want to make accusations on air, but now I'm starting to think that you somehow tricked me into picking Night of the Leopard <laughs> so you could use the word crepuscular. Crepuscular, but yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> so. I, just, I just want to, I want to plant a flag right there and then. I feel like, you know, the matrix is all revealing itself around me. I, I, I'm going to have... rearrange the letters of God Awful Movies. It's going to spell crepuscular. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I'm not taking an official position on this just yet. So yeah, so they're like, hey, is there another mine where they might be hiding? But just then Cole calls them and he's like, hey, I saw all the murder bunnies. They're hanging out at the general store. Now, you would think that their plan would then be like, oh, well, we should get some people down to the general store. Guys, we have like nothing if not cyanide bombs, right? Machine like, guns. Right. right. We have machine guns now. We could go to where they're sleeping and everybody's like, nope. OK, so we have a couple hours before they wake up to evacuate the town. No, no, that wouldn't be honorable. <laughs> <laughs> we must challenge these giant rabbits one-on-one -on -one to a duel. <laughs> so, slap, slap. Yeah. So they've got they, they've got to start the big evacuation, and then we cut immediately to sunset because the movie's like yada yada yada. Now it's sunset. Let's get back to the rabbits, <laughs> and we see the like the the murder bunnies ride again montage here. Oh my God. <laughs> they tell us that there are machine gun sites set up and I was like, I swear to God, if we get a Saving Private Ryan bunnies rushing the pillboxes scene. <laughs> <laughs> we totally I do. D-Day with rabbits is what they're setting up and yes. we're going to get that. Yes, Absolutely. that's exactly that is the finale of the fucking movie. B La Parra D-Day. B-Day. 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 I was being patient, but I'm not going to anymore. B-Day. <laughs> It's B day. Lapora D day is better. Yeah, no, his is better. Sorry, I'll kill myself right now. <laughs> so you shouldn't have made fun of my puns. The Battle of Lapomatix. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel Harbor. Nice. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Eli's so mad right now because he hates puns. <laughs> 
So, but, and once again, the music is doing the best it can, right? It's, it's just like, no, no, bunnies hopping by tiny little houses with tiny little mailboxes. Very, very scary, right? And then we, we hear this amazing moment where like they're evacuating the town and there's a guy who's like on a loudspeaker going, people are advised to drive with their windows up. <laughs> just, I love the visual there of the bunny like halfway into the window <laughs> trying to get him like the Ow. T-Rex. I feel like they're too big for a car window to smash. <laughs> the, you're, like that's a good strategy to trap them would be to w have windows down and they no, oh, try right. to jump Yeah, in. yeah, exactly, exactly. The sheriff gets a call at this point from the they, the National Guard scouts or whatever. Like they're like the bunnies are attacking across the two mile front, and I'm like, what? Are, are they coordinating now? Do they have a left <laughs> flank? What's these are super intelligent vampire <laughs> soldier special ops bunnies that have coordinated plans? Yes, they yes they are clearly. He's like, you've got about 40 to 50 minutes be before you reach them. I'm like, they, you can tell where they're going 40 minutes out? How? Well, <laughs> in the next scene, one of the scientist guys is like, what's a, what's a rabbit's stride in like feet? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we learn it's four to five feet the for giant, a giant rabbit. For giant How rabbits, the fuck yeah. does that end the conversation about the math, though? It's <laughs> like... Speed is distance over whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we have right. distance. It's four to five. So, yeah. So, so we, we head back to the station. They're coordinating more, you know, because there's nothing more exciting than additional coordination. And this is the moment where they fi they finally figure out the plan. Roy figures out what to do, right? Because the one, the one cop is like, well, I guess we could make a giant fence that's two miles wide and 700 feet tall. And he's like, Aha! A fence! That's it! And all of us are like, wait, fucking what? But no, that's not what he means. What he means is they're going to electrify train tracks and send the bunnies over the electrified train tracks and thereby kill all of them. Right. And I should be clear that the only reason we know that is because we watched the movie. We don't know that because any character tells us until the absolute nanosecond it happens, right? We are just looking at what happened in the movie and going, okay, I guess when that guy said fence, he meant electrified railroad tracks. Yeah, no, they're very coy about what the fucking plan is for the, right, the remainder of the film. I thought they were seriously going to like buy a really long fence and stretch it across the thing. And then electrify it yeah. with the third rail? That's what they implied, yeah. Yeah. Um, no third rail on just regular trains, though. Yeah, so then we, we cut to this cop, and I wrote in my notes, evacuating the drive-in theater, but, but that's not what's happening. They are nope. pressing these people into service against the murder bunnies. Well, and to be clear, everyone immediately says yes. He's like... Hi, everybody. I know this is weird. You're all here at Make Out Point trying to watch Garfield and Friends. There's a herd of killer rabbits. I need you all to follow me in perfect precision to lure them to their deaths. And everyone's like, oh, fuck yeah. No, it's a great. Oh, rabbit yeah, decoy caravan. Got it. Honk, yeah, honk, honk. Course. Yep, we got it. And that, they're all in lockstep. We And you said we rehearsed this for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, I feel like you lie. When it's killer rabbits, you're like, it's communist, y'all, come on. But but I want to be super clear because the cop never says, if you would like to volunteer to help our efforts to get, they said they say there's killer rabbits coming, you've got to come this way. Everyone at that drive-in assumed that they were evacuating, right? Yeah. yeah. But they don't. Also, I think they evacuated to a drive-in theater playing porn, right? The, the title was Every Little Crook and Nanny. Yes. Which uh -huh. sounds like porn to me. All right. That's, it's another MGM movie that came out that very same year. Telling about Heath Enright that he was like, that's got to be porn, right? Every, <laughs> every little nook and cranny, but crook and nanny. I'm writing my notes. That feels like porn. For the God Awful uh, Movies yeah, yeah, podcast. And when I see crooks and nannies. It's, it's a porn yeah, poonerism, actually. <laughs> I think come. Because po poon. So, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I get it. So, yeah, so apparently the plan now is to get all of those people to park side by side in a very long line because the bunnies are a, are terrified of light. And so when they see everybody's headlights, they'll move towards the electrified train tracks. Right. They're doing like a 300 thing, right? They're like filtering the rabbits into like this little spot that they want them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're floppily. <laughs> There it is. I was like, 
I was like, what a weird reach for them. There it is. See, I was trying to come up with a thumper way, a way to get thumper into Thermopylae. It seemed like it was there, but it wasn't. And you got you got me. You got there. See, faster. this is interesting because my, my jokes are character based. So I was trying to formulate the deformed rabbit who goes to meet the humans. Oh, and he's like, there you go. Some or the, the human scenes. who goes to meet the rabbit. You see, I hadn't for and Heath was ready with their floppily. Yep. There you go. Really showing how the sausage is made here on <laughs> yeah. this particular episode of God Awful Movies. So yeah, so the co- the cops are heading towards the rail- railroad tracks because they've heard that's where the movie ends. This is where Roy's like, oh shit, you know, my wife is probably in distress by now. We should, g- I should take the chopper and go rescue her. And they're like, yeah, no, that's a... Gentlemen, I'm so sorry. Can I borrow this chopper during this national emergency to go save my wife? It's the third act. And they're like, yeah, no, obviously, oh, well, obviously the third act. Oh. <laughs> obviously. Meanwhile, we cut back to, and we have so much footage of the stampeding rabbits. I just want to remind you that a group of rabbits is called, among other things, a fluffle, right? So we have to <laughs> keep. fantastic. <laughs> I didn't know that one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we have to keep coming back to this murder fluffle. <laughs> and the music's just going, no, this is a very scary fluffle. It's God a damn it. Take, take this seriously. So yeah, yeah, so they make their wall of headlights. Meanwhile, we get mom trying to figure out how to dig the car out of this rut. And damn it, if the rabbits aren't sneaking up on them. Again, these rabbits are like, shh, shh, shh. this is the wife and child of that guy. Who <laughs> <that thing. laughs> this is a, this one. This one's personal, guys. Okay. We need to savor this one a bit. Yeah. yeah. They had like two giant rabbit scouts that went out to find yes. these two main characters. Clearly. And then like, and call, call in reinforcement. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. And again, again, they've got an RV. As near as we can tell, sit inside the RV is a foolproof plan. Nope. She does not do that. <laughs> mm, she does not. She puts her kid in the RV and then she wanders out to go have a look around, do a little exploring. Take them on one by one. <laughs> yeah. Well, she knows about going inside. She tells the kid, like, go inside because that makes sense. Right. Lock the door. Which is- They're in the same location, able to access the inside the same amount. And she's like, honey, you go inside. I'm going to take on these rabbits myself. Yes. I wanted her to do, like, the Rambo suit up, right? She puts the schmear stuff under her eyes, <laughs> tightens a bandana. <laughs> So, yeah, but so she gets some flares, right? Because she's going to need to, like, signal where they are to her husband. No bunny messes with my daughter. I'm Fuck so yeah. sorry, Noah. Yeah, no, I'm no, so no sorry. you got there. You got if there. If I didn't it's, it's say it, I would throw up. I would yep. throw up. No, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, so the buddies are coming, but she cracks a flare. So she's, like, holding them off with the flare, and they can't come near enough to her because, of course, the... The effects wouldn't allow for that. They have to be in separate shots. Well, and they're vampire bunnies. They hate light. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind. So the flare. They either hate light and or are triggered by light to attack. The movie hasn't been clear. Yeah. Or they're very responsible about uh, road signals. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That could be it, too. Yeah. So, yeah. And she also she throws her flare, sets one of the bunnies on fire. And then I'm like, I see now I want her to die and I won't be happy unless she does as part of the movie. (laughs) How great would it be, though, if all the bunnies just stop and put him out and they're like, geez, lady. What the fuck? Ah. (laughs) You're an (laughs) ass. Hey, can I say this? You're an asshole. Right. I'm a bunny. So there's this great and they've got the poor little girl. She's in the RV looking out the window. She's screaming, but they didn't give her enough stuff to scream. So the little kid just has to vamp and she's like, mommy, wait, mommy. Oh, no, mommy, rabbits. (laughs) <laughs> mommy scared scared am i you know mommy <laughs> we have a bad job in a bad movie i don't know <laughs> i hope your daughter's more successful than this <laughs> <laughs> are there any bagels left to crafty yeah so, <laughs> but just then her husband shows up so they take the kid out of, well no i'm sorry the the spotlight on the helicopter scares them all off because they're vampire rabbits right <laughs> this was so lazy. The helicopter lands and the rabbits were like, I mean, we're not going to deny the kid a helicopter ride. Go on. <laughs> and they try desperately to add a little suspense here, right? They have this bit where they're like, well, we can't electrify the track until this train gets by and it's going too slow. And they like they they try to put some suspense in there, but eventually they're just like, ah, fuck it. Like, how can a slow train be suspenseful, right? Anyway. <laughs> So, okay, so we check back in with the involuntary human shield that the National Guard put together. They're addressing everyone in their cars. They're like, okay, 
So in just a minute, this entire area in front of you is going to be filled with murderous rabbits and machine gun fire. I'm going to need you to not be a bunch of pussies about it, okay? Okay. Uh, now, don't worry. The rabbits have agreed that they're afraid of light for this last 10 minutes of the movie. So... You know, just keep those headlights on and you'll be fine. Roll up those windows. Yeah. Remember right. we said earlier? Yes. Well, and, and then we should point out, because again, because it, 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 despite despite Heath's assumptions, it wasn't a porn at the drive-in. So like a lot of these people have their kids with them. Like we, we see these people with their families and shit. I still don't think it's clear that it wasn't porn oh, based okay. on what you said. Right, so. Look, <laughs> this is the generation that sent their kids to Vietnam. Exactly. They no, get it. They no, understand not, the needs of the many. Not quite, but yes. <laughs> I remember I saw my first porn with my parents at the drive-in. It was fun. Okay, that I believe. Yeah, no, honestly. Yeah, so so Roy shows up in the helicopter just in time for the finale of the movie. The helicopter guy's like, okay, but I'm getting the fuck out of here. This is stupid. The train goes by, so, you know, no, no suspense there. And then they crank up the power that's going to electrify the train tracks. Mm -hmm. I wanted so bad for the rabbits to just run around the side of the electrified part. Or just jump, or over, jump it. over it. Yes, yeah, exactly. right. It's or just jump over the like two and a half foot span or whatever. <laughs> right. box. Guys, did anyone know about jumping? Be honest. Who knew about all of you? You all knew about jumping. Let's name okay. things that are good at jumping. Rabbits. Fuck. Okay. Fuck. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, at least we know for the grasshoppers thing next week, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so many mystery vials. Why do we even have mystery vials? <laughs> so, and then we're going to spend, I don't know, seven minutes right on this montage of electrifying rabbits, shooting them with machine guns and firing flamethrowers at them. It feels like someone was doing some not great therapy for themselves and their fear just, of rabbits, right? <laughs> is the that? guy who was afraid of rabbits who wrote this movie was like, and then they fuck or die. And it was like, okay, cool. So we like shoot some. And he was like, more, <laughs> more <laughs> the, footage of the rabbits dying. The heroic conclusion of this movie is a mass bunny genocide, mm -hmm. right? And it goes on for so long. This is why Gen X is so fucked up, y'all. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And the porn they saw at the drive-in with their parents. Well, that's it's too, a combo. Yes. <laughs> I have to point out that my, so my seizure app that I have on my iPad where I watch this, there's flashing lights all over this finale. Mm -hmm. My seizure app just shut down my iPad. I didn't even know it had that setting, but it was like, no more iPad for you. <laughs> so my experience was that these bunnies start getting electrocuted and then it was dark for like two and a half minutes. And I was like, wow, they're really That's... going for like a thematic <laughs> end of life. It's a bold ending. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, we, we watch a lot of bunny murder and then they stare triumphantly out over a pile of bunny corpses. Again, it had to say that in the script. The screenwriter must have written the words and then they stare triumphantly out over a pile of bunny corpses. I'm guessing he wrote it, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy style all over <laughs> in the margins of the script. Jack Rabbit a dull boy. Nice. Nice. Oh, Eli, right. I got another rabbit thing in there. Are you Dude, happy about I'm that? So, I come so because so, I'm fuming with rage is what I'm yeah, doing. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is, a, this is the final episode. We almost <laughs> made it to 400, everybody. <laughs> but I got out rabbit punned for the last time. So then we're going to wrap things up on the most useless scene in this stupid fucking movie, right? So we, we get like, I guess... Roy's out playing football with his buddies. Cole is standing in the middle of the end zone waiting for a break so that they can chat for this final scene. I should also be clear that no, nobody is dressed for football like remotely. No. I guess this is a thing they did back in 72. Yeah, this appears to be an interdepartmental game of football at the university. Yeah. So he's like, so, hey, Cole, how's the uh, how's the you know post finale of the movie working for you? And he's like, oh, it's great. The coyotes are back at the ranch. Uh, no, no giant killer rabbits. It's like, oh, all right. Do you you must have something more to say than that for this scene to be included in the film? No, he's like, nope. <laughs> no, not a goddamn thing. <laughs> he says survival of the fittest as if that like solved it. Yeah, I. What? Like like the evolutionary process that Darwin talked about with electrified train tracks? Yes. <laughs> That's how uh, the good finches made yeah, it. You know, it's a, the giant bunnies that weren't conductive survived. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and he's like, you know, you and your wife should come out to the ranch sometime. He's like, sure, man, whatever. I can't believe we did a whole scene for this. 
And then we cut to Amanda and Cole Jr. running through the field and we zoom in and you think that we're going to see like a giant bunny paw rise out of the ground the way that Eli said. <laughs> yeah, but it, for sure. They just freeze frame on regular ass rabbits. <laughs> As though to say, I know, friends, real rabbits are still out there and still a very <laughs> real danger. <laughs> I know we all had a good time watching that 17 minute sequence of rabbit electrocution that I insisted on, but <laughs> seriously, they're out there and they're, they're still, we didn't kill all we're of all them. We're all scared of them. It ends on like ominous rabbits being like, yes, end of yes. movie. Right. And credits roll over top of them. Yeah. All right. So obvious question at the end of this, though, like, because remember, like when you first saw Jaws as a kid, how you were scared to even go to the bathroom because there was water in there. What are you scared to do now that you're terrified of rabbits? Oh, oh, go to Arizona. <laughs> oh, damn it. Wait, what? Damn it. Are there a lot of rabbits there? Well, in this movie, there sure as fuck where were. The movie was. Yeah. So, all right. We're going right we're going to Arizona right after now. watching this. Yeah. Ooh. God damn it. All right. I hope um, they're yawny. I hope they oh, yawn. What if this is a posthumous episode? That'll be so ironic if we're killed by giant rabbits and this episode comes out afterwards. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Night of the Lepus, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get back on task for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Two pastors, one from a wealthy parish in a predominantly white suburb, the other, the head of an inner city church, oh, no. must learn to bridge the gap between their different philosophies and their individual prejudices. Are they different races, maybe? Mm, together they <laughs> I look. wonder what they mean by inner city church. <laughs> together they look for common ground through faith and fight to save one struggling urban church and the people oh, no. it serves. The thug church. We'll be really? watching <laughs> The Second Chance. Oh, fuck. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 399 to our merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Guide, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Salak Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work harder earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The mystery serum that makes giant mutant animals never got checked on again. No. DeForest Kelly learned his lesson about non-Star Trek movies. The creators of Night of the Lepus went on to create Attack of the Killer Hamsters, The Cat Who Liked to Be Pet Too Much, and Rise of the Baby in a Tuxedo. <laughs> okay, I can't tell if you were joking or not. He is. Did they? <laughs> no, sadly. Is next week's episode Rise of the Baby in a Tuxedo? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> That's how you know. There you go. Obviously. They're so fucking cute. It's amazing. So cute. It's so I giggled I for 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. That, every, giggling every time Lucinda time. came up, she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and when he when the ones are going into shock and he gets to grab their giblets, right? He gets yeah. to grab their fat. <laughs> right. He's like, oh, this one's going into shock. Look at him. Well, he's going to pay him a snoot. I'm going to give him a rabble. Do you think they did like test audiences for this movie and they were all like, so cute. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm just, it's scary. I don't think that they did test audiences for this movie. No, no. I'm very likely no. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. And this one, Yak's Horn, gives you unbelievable focus. No way. Yeah, way. Hey guys, what's with the bottle of pills? Did you guys get caught in a pyramid scheme again? Okay, first of all, that wasn't a pyramid scheme. It was a multi-level marketing business opportunity. No. Nope. And you ruined our chances to be girl bosses. And two, no, these are brain pills. Brain pills? Yeah, I've been lacking really uh, vague, undefinable qualities lately. You know, energy, focus. Girl bossness. Girl bossness, yeah. So I bought a bunch of these pills online, which... It's crazy. They're legally allowed to tell me that they help with those things. Yeah. Look, Eli, if you want to take better care of your brain, why not try therapy with BetterHelp? How is therapy going to help us be a girl boss? 
Okay, I need you to stop saying girl boss. No, yeah, I heard I said it a few times in a row. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. Psh, talking through things. Noah, this one is pure, uncut weasel gallbladder. No, it isn't. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So no awkward therapist breakups? Exactly. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp. Girl boss. You said you heard it. I, I did, but once I said it, I, I wouldn't. It was all I wanted to do at that point. No, I get it. I get it. Girl boss. Girl boss. <laughs> yeah! No, more from the shoulder. I'm using my shoulder, Heath. I don't know what that means. Hey, more guys, from that. Have you seen my... Damn it, guys. What did I say about using my mattress as a punching bag? That's not a punching bag, and what you're doing isn't punching. Well, after that. Uh, don't? Don't, exactly. Uh, sorry, Noah, but this is an emergency. An emergency? How? We got to get in fighting shape for AACON this weekend. Yeah, well, technically last weekend when people hear this don't, episode. Don't, don't overthink it. But yeah, fighting shape. Or else, how will anyone know who's the king of the atheists? King of the atheists, exactly. Guys, for the hundredth time, we are not starting a kumite at American Atheist Convention. Nick said no. And besides, if you're looking to get in shape, why not try FitBod? Oh, What's FitBod? Whether you've been missing gym time or hit a plateau, FitBod will build a workout plan individualized to you. The app switches up your exercises to avoid overtraining or burnout while keeping your workouts fresh and fun. And your program also changes based on your personal progress for maximized results. Whether you work out in the weight room or your living room, FitBod has you covered. I don't know, Noah. Isn't that expensive? Not at all. A full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. All right, Noah, I'm in. Where do I sign up? Keep up your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. Okay, but if we're not doing a kumite, how do we know who's the king of the atheists? Thank you. What's, uh, that's, it's easy, man. That's Seth. Seth Andrews. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. Silky voice. That he does, Eli. Daddy does. Jerky. Check. Whistle. Two. Two versions. Hey, guys. What's with all the camping gear? Oh, hey, Heath. Eli's phone is due for an upgrade, so you know what that means. An all-day trip to the cell phone store. Even if you think you're just going to go in and out, you end up there all day. Yeah, and the sales pitches, <sighs> yikes. Guys, yeah, I know all about that stuff. That's why I switched to Mint Mobile. What's... Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? You're pulling my leg. I'm not. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Plus, all plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. Ooh, eSIM. Exactly. All right, Heath, we're in. Where do we sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, Heath, we're in. See, Ryan Reynolds, we could write the next Deadpool movie. Uh, didn't he just sell it, though? I, I feel like he could put in a word. Put in a word, exactly. All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.